When a programmer first starts out learning data structures, they probably learn an array first and an array list second. And it can actually get pretty confusing between what exactly goes with an array and what goes with an array list. So in this video, I hope to show you the differences between an array list and an array. So let's start talking about the differences between an array and an array list by starting at the beginning or creation of arrays and array lists, and that is instantiation. An array is created like this. You have the data type, the reference, new allocating memory, and the data type again with the length of the array. An array list, you're going to have the name of the class, type parameter, the reference, new, which is allocating memory, and the constructor with another type parameter sandwiched in there. So an array is going to be different in terms of data type. Array list, you're talking about a class, and array, you're talking about what data type is going to be inside of the array. Now in type parameters, that's where the array list says what type of data is going to be inside the array list, but we already had that inside of an array at the beginning of the array and at the end there. Something that's similar is that they're both referencing something. Mant is referencing an array and list is referencing an array list. Another similarity is the keyword new. It's both saying, hey, I need memory for either the array list or the array. And then finally, we have the length of the array at the top there is 10. And then usually you don't put anything inside of the constructor inside of an array list. You could put the capacity there, and that would set the capacity of the array list, but it wouldn't set the size of the array list. So those are really the differences in the creation of both an array and an array list. So the next difference that I want to talk about is in terms of primitives. And if we look at the top there, that array is already holding primitives in it, int primitives to be exact, which are of the integer type. But if we tried to do the same thing with an array list, and we tried to store primitives inside of an array list, it wouldn't work. Because array lists cannot hold primitives. They can only hold objects. And that's one of the reasons why Java has a corresponding wrapper class to every primitive because the wrapper class is an object that wraps around a primitive. Since we just got done talking about primitives, let's talk about objects. So we know that an array list can hold objects. In fact, it can only hold objects. What about arrays? If I tried to put integers inside of an array, yes, it would work just fine. So primitives can be stored in arrays, but not in array lists. But objects can be stored in both arrays and array lists. So now let's talk about generics. And generics is the means by which array lists are able to specify the type of data that's going to go into the array list. So we know that array lists can use generics. What about arrays? So if I were to add a type parameter inside of an array, it would not work. So generics only work with array lists. And we can see that in our nice little chart there. Array, no, array list, yes. So arrays and array list have different ways of measuring their length. So let's look at array list first. I've created an array list called list, added one value to it. And so this is what it would look like visually. And then if we were to output their size and capacity, it would say size is 1 and capacity is 10. That's because there's one element inside of an array list. And in this case, the capacity would be 10. So size is showing how many elements are inside of there. Capacity is showing how many possible elements can be stored inside of the array list at this time. Next, we would look at the array. And after new, where it says int 10, that's going to indicate the length. So visually, an array would look like this. And if we were to print out its length using the field length or mant.length, the length would be 10. That is both the size and the total capacity of an array. So array list uses size and capacity, and array just uses length. Now let's talk about array list and arrays in terms of how they're accessed, or how the elements inside of the array and the array list are accessed. So first, let's look at the array list. And you can see here that I'm using the methods add, the overloaded add, set, and get. And of course, all of these are methods. So if you want to access something inside of an array list, you really need to use one of its methods. An array is different in that if you want to access something inside of an array list, like setting 
the zeroth index to five or outputting what is in the first index, you would use those square brackets to set and pull data out of an array. So now we're going to talk about setting elements with arrays and array lists. So I've created an array list called list, and then I'm going to add 10 elements to it. And those elements are all going to be zeros, and this is what it would look like visually. Next, what I want to do is I want to set the element in the zeroth index. And I'm going to set that value to 42. And then I could do this again, saying list.set 5, 42, and that would set the element in the fifth index. So that's how it would work with an array list, and an array has a comparable way of setting elements inside of the array. So I'm going to create an array called mant, and this is what it would look like visually. And then if I want to do the same thing, not in the same way, but if I wanted to do the same thing of setting elements inside of an array, I could do that by saying mant sub 0 equals 42. So now the value in the 0th index would become 42, and do it again in the 5th index, and also setting it to 42. So again, array and array list don't set values in the same way, but they have the same capability of setting elements inside of themselves. Now that we've talked about setting elements, let's talk about adding elements to arrays and array lists. So we started with an array list, and in this particular example, I'm not going to show capacity. So I use the add method to add values to the array list. I can do this as many times as I would like and add as many values to the end of an array list as I would like. Now, if I had an array and I wanted to add values to the end of the array, I could not do it. An array does not have a built-in way to add elements to the array. You can always change or set the values inside of the array, but you can't actually add new values to an array. So we just got done talking about adding elements, so let's talk about something closely related, and that is inserting elements. So first we're going to talk about an array list, and I've created an array list called list. And in this example, I'm not going to show capacity. So I've created a for loop to add elements inside of the array list, and I'm going to add 1 through 5, excluding 2. So this is what the array list would look like, 1, 3, 4, 5. And then if I wanted to add an element into the first index, and that element being 2, with an array list, I could do it, and it would look something like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if I wanted to do that with an array, I could create an array, but unfortunately, an array does not allow you to add new elements into an array. Now you could do it with some code, but it doesn't have a built-in way of inserting elements into an array. You have to actually write a method or some kind of code in order to insert elements. Now what about removing elements from an array and an array list? Well, let's start with array list. So I've created an array list called list, and I want you to note the capacity is hidden for this example. I am then going to write a for loop that is going to add elements 1 through 5 to the array list. So it would look something like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the value at the second index, so that would be 3. So we remove 3, 4 and 5 shift over, and yes, we can do it with array lists. If I was going to do it with an array, I would like to, but unfortunately, I can't. There's no built-in way to remove elements from an array. There's a way that you could do it with code, but we're talking about built-in ways of accomplishing these goals. So here is definitely a big one. We're talking about resizing. And let's talk about resizing in terms of array lists. So we've created an array list called list. We're going to go through the array list and add the elements 1 through 10 into the array list. And now you can see that our array list is full, but we want to add another element to the array list. Could we do it? Absolutely. What's going to happen behind the scenes is that Java is going to create a second array with a new capacity, the capacity of 15. It's going to copy over the elements in the old array, and transfer them into the new array. And then it's going to insert the element 11 into the 10th index. And then finally what it's going to do is reference the new array 
which is the undergirding of our array list. And so seamlessly, without us even knowing it, it's going to add capacity and add new elements to the array list. And then the old array eventually will be carted away by garbage collection. Nice, clean, neat. You don't see much in the code, but there's a lot happening behind the scenes. Now what about arrays? Nope, there's no array equivalent. That's really the difference between an array and array list. Array lists are called dynamic because they can dynamically resize themselves without having to do anything extra. Arrays are immutable. If you set the length to 10, it's going to be 10 for its entire life. You can't go back and change it. You can do what we just did with code, and that is create a new array, copy everything over, add the new element to the new array, but it's far easier just let array lists do that. Next, let's talk about a fun topic, and that is multi-dimensional arrays and array lists. So this time I'm going to start with the array. So I've created a multi-dimensional array called mant and it has three rows and four columns. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fill the array. We're going to start at one and fill it all the way up to its last index. So we get something that looks kind of like a matrix. And arrays do this whole multi-dimensional thing very easily. Whereas if you want multi-dimensions with an array list, there are no multi-dimensions with array list. I guess there was a way that you could create some code that you had an array list pointing to other array lists, but it doesn't do it easily or as naturally as what an array does. So arrays, multi-dimensions, yes. Array list, multi-dimensions, no. So on our last stop in looking at the differences between arrays and array list, we're going to talk about how to traverse or go through an array and array list, and also how to output an array and array list. So we're going to look at some options for array first and then for array list. So first, I've created an array called mant, and its length is going to be four. So then I'm going to traverse the array mant with a for loop. And for loops work just fine with arrays. And I'm going to add the values 1, 2, 3, and 4 to the array. Next, if I wanted to output the array, I could use something called a for each loop. And it absolutely works with an array. So you see I've numbered the line there with the corresponding output. So line 1 would output 1, 2, 3, 4 as the for each loop visits every element inside of the array. Another option for arrays is the print line method. And the print line method would work with arrays, but probably not in the way that you would expect it to. It's not going to do anything with the elements inside of the array. What it's going to do is output a square bracket indicating it is an array, an i indicating it is an integer array, and then the at is indicating, hey, where is this array stored in memory? Now, there's a small possibility that that's what you might want, but most likely you're looking for the values inside of the array. Now the arrays class has a nice little way of outputting the elements inside of an array, but we're just talking about in its native environment without using any extras. It would output a memory reference. So those are three ways that an array can be gone through and displayed. Standard for loop, for each loop, and the print line method. Next, we're going to talk about array list. So I've created an array list called list, and I've gone through it with a standard for loop, adding the elements one through four to the array list. And so standard for loops would work fine with array list. Next, just like I did with the array, I'm going to use a for each loop. And the for each loop would work just fine with the array list, and it would output the values one, two, three, four as we go through all of the elements of the array list. Next, I could use the toString method of the array list class, and its output is going to be a very stylized output. It's going to have a bracket, an element, a comma, a space, then the next element finally closed by a square bracket. And so this output is probably closer to what you were expecting than what you do with an array. And then an array list has access to things called iterators. And with this iterator, all I'm doing is 
visiting each element inside of the array and outputting its value with a space afterwards. So the output would look something like this, one, two, three, four. Not only can ArrayList use iterators, they can also use list iterators. And in this list iterator, I am going to, again, output the values inside of the ArrayList list. So the output would look like one, two, three, four. So there are several ways to traverse and output both arrays and array lists. Array lists have a few more options, but again, multiple options for outputting and traversal. Summing up this array versus array list, I've tried to put the differences and the similarities into categories. The first is syntax. We first looked at the instantiation, how an array is created versus an array list, access, arrays use brackets, and array lists use methods, and then size, capacity, and length. Size and capacity are associated with array list, and length is associated with arrays. Next, on what type of values can they store? Well, arrays can store primitives and objects. Array lists, on the other hand, can only store objects, and they also can only use generics. Arrays don't use generics. In terms of setting, adding, inserting, and removing elements, an array and array list can both set items inside of themselves, so change values inside of an array and array list, but array list is the only one that can add new elements, insert elements, and remove elements without having to write extra code. It's natural to an array list. One of the biggest ones is the whole idea of resizing. An array list can increase its capacity and also with methods decrease its capacity. An array is immutable and once its value is set, it cannot change. So arrays are called static and array lists are called dynamic because of this. A place where the array really shines is multiple dimensions because an array can have multiple dimensions whereas an array list cannot. And then finally we looked at how you can traverse and output an array versus an array list. With an array you could use a for loop for each loop and you can also use the print line method but it probably doesn't have the right results. Array list you can use for loop for each loop, the print line method or the two string method. And you can also use iterators and list iterators with array list. So as I said in the beginning, it can kind of be daunting to see the differences between an array and array list, but hopefully this video helped you distinguish between the two and really see the differences and similarities between arrays and array lists. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.